Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. I thought I'd get back to doing some <laughs> reviews as the name indicates. And uh, sort of cover some of the products that I reviewed during the last week or so. Um, out of that, I thought I'd pick the uh, Hi-Fi Man Ananda headphone, uh, mostly because uh, it's, when I wrote the review, people seemed to have uh, walked away with slightly different impression that I wanted them to uh, take away from the review. So let's go over it. The uh, headphone itself, I think it's the largest that I've ever tested. You can see these massive cups in here. And um, when I try to mount this on my uh, headphone fixture, I don't know if you can see in the front here, but it actually has a curve going inside. This is somebody's headphone and uh, maybe we would use it deformed, I don't know. Uh, but it, it actually, you can see through it uh, to the fixture. So this was not a case of a, uh, you know, fully sealed uh, headphone. Usually my headphone fixture fits better than you would actually wear on your head. But in this case, uh, there was a gap in there and that may have impacted the measurements a bit. So, um, but overall though, it was quite easy to mount and, and make measurements. When I say easy, it means uh, when I put it on, I have my jig is a stereo jig. So the two channels matched well and they match well at two different frequencies that I test and I uh, wasn't very picky about how you mounted the uh, headphone. If we look at the um, frequency response compared to our preference curve, uh, the dash blue is our preference curve. Um, the first thing that jumps out at me is just amount of wiggliness in here. Uh, many headphones I test, um, Oh, sorry, you couldn't see my mouse. Um, usually they're smooth in this sort of uh, upper base to uh, you know lower uh, treble or so. Uh, not so here. There's just tons of variations. And even within the variations, there are other variations. You can see the wiggliness is just quite high. So to me, it looks like this driver is, is not well behaved. That as you sweep it from you know one frequency to the other, like this region is kind of smooth, and then it starts to pick up all these dips. Um, you can see this better in this group delay uh, graph. The group delay is hard to interpret by itself as far as what the values mean, but generally you want to have an exponential decay going to zero here. And we see that there's just a tons of messiness. Now, many headphones have some amount of messiness, especially in the middle. But this thing is just messy across the board. The only area that's not messy is this one area that was smooth. Everything else from low bass to, I mean, I don't know where you hang your hat on. Typically this gets messy if you have multiple, more than one source of sound, um, meaning the two are, are out of phase with each other and uh, you get cancellations and additions and the phase basically gets destroyed. When we measure speakers in the room, same thing happens. Sound bounces off the walls, changes the timing. They all combine together and really create a mess in there. Uh, luckily, our ears aren't very sensitive, so we don't hear all these ups and downs. But it does indicate a driver that's just not comfortable producing a full range. Uh, my guess is that to make a driver this big, it's got some resonances and, and modal responses within that large driver that are just out of control. Um, on this thing. And, uh, you know, their HE6 headphone did quite well in my testing, but this one, I just feel like either interest of cost or just bigger is better <laughs> was the number one priority. Uh, you know, just objective measurement tends to indicate that um, it just has quite a few, bit of roughness in its response, literally and, and, uh, and objectively. Um, there is a bass droop in here, and there was, this is where everybody got fixated over, but it's really between 20 and 30 hertz, and uh, it could be because of the gap, as I mentioned. Uh, people went crazy thinking the whole thing must be no good, but it's a slight gap, and I mentioned that in the review that uh, I actually tried to squeeze it and, and get that out of there, and it just made this curve worse. But since it's such a small region, it's really not material on that front. The other thing that was disappointing was this just level of distortion. Uh, headphones are supposed to be very low distortion devices, um, but again, here we see this incredible busyness in here, and again, in, in higher frequencies. And uh, if we go back to frequency response or here, we see this, it's all in the same regions where, you know, distortion is going nuts here and also going nuts here. And you can see all the roughness in here. Uh, as a side note, when you look at other people's measurements, you never see these things because they highly smooth these graphs. Either they smooth them 
or they average a bunch of them, or they make this vertical scale very large. Some go as high as 100 dB vertically. And when you do that, you squash the graphs and, and you make them look very smooth. I don't do that. I, I want to know what the driver is doing. I want to know the sources of distortion. And so allow you to see this little wiggleness, even though from tonality point of view, you want to sort of step back and ignore that. Uh, but from a micro view, it just is one of the, I would say, I don't know if the right word to use, but it's the dirtiest driver that I've measured. Uh, maybe the abyss uh, that I measured was was just as bad. I don't know. That actually had more distortion than this one. Um, but uh, it's just not good. You know, headphones really need to be low distortion. They're, they're moving tiny amount of air inside your ear, and they should be able to do that with very little distortion. Now, the green curve is at 114, 114 dB SPL, so it's quite loud. But, you know, if you look at it, other headphones, they don't have these, these trends. And that's what the these three steps show you, uh, 94, 104, and 114 is that how bad is, is distortion progressing? And we can see that these are really the problem areas and we push the driver just a little bit more, it just the driver goes nuts. Um, at the lowest level, even the 94 dB, which is to me is just average to slightly below average uh, listening level, we see that it just struggles to stay below my uh, reference of 40 dB. And at some frequencies, it actually goes way past that. So to me, it's just not an acceptable performance. Uh, on this thing. Um, one advantage of this planar magnetic headphones is that they're basically a trace on a piece of mylar, so it acts like a resistor, and so the impedance is flat, is basically resistive, so it's easy to drive, and, uh, and the impedance is low, meaning that you need a lot of current to drive it, relatively speaking. Um, the headphone itself is quite sensitive. Uh, it only needs uh, 93 millivolts uh, to produce this 94 dB SPL. You can see in this graph of, you know, where we are and some crazy stuff out here, like the Hi-Fi Man's HE6 at the other extreme requires 1250, and this one basically 100. So uh, HE6 requires 12 times more power than this. So it's quite a bit more efficient. It's more efficient than the popular HD. Uh, uh, 650 from Sennheiser, about three times more efficient. So this you can power with, uh, you know, even a standard phone or, you know, anything you have out there. It should not be very taxing on this thing. So I went ahead and, and did some listening tests. And I got to tell you, one of the advantage of these such big cups is that you get this really nice spatial quality. Spatial quality means not everything's sort of, you know, crammed in the middle of your head. But because of these cups and they sort of stand proud, you get a lot of the sound stage outside of your head, which with headphones, I find that is critical. Otherwise you get that terrible headphone sound that's that's quite a bit worse than the experience you get with speakers. So that effect comes across. And I think a lot of the positive reviews that you see out there is people mesmerized by that effect. And I can't deny the, the attractiveness of that, that effect. It's, it's quite a beautiful effect. And I praise it when I find it. And this is right up there on that. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to just think past that and say, all right, how is the tonality? How is the overall sound? And I find that the frequency response basically told the truth that everywhere that there was a hole, you needed to lift that up. And anywhere there are peaks, you want to pull those down. And in my case, I found it, you know, sounding somewhat bright. And that's up all those you know, resonances down in highs. And uh, I gave it some sub bass boost. Uh, this is where people argue. They say, well, if you didn't, if you had a perfect seal, then you wouldn't have shown the droop and this wouldn't be necessary. My answer to them is, how on earth do you get something this big to fully seal around your, your face? I think it won't seal. Certainly in my case, it needed the sub bass. So maybe with my face, it didn't fit either uh, on this thing. Once you have this equalization, it sounds quite good. So now you get tonally correct with this beautiful spatial effects, you know, combined together. Um, but as I listened to it longer and longer, it just, there was this sense of fidelity that was missing. And this is purely subjective and it may be totally nonsense from an objective point of view. But, you know, the listening tests are the listening tests. I'm sharing with you what I found. Usually when I have spectacular headphones, uh, I continue to listen to them well past the review. I almost don't want to put them down to go take pictures on, on this thing. But I found that, uh, you know, on these, I just, you know, once I turned the level down and uh, I was just listening to it while I was working, I, I didn't enjoy it. I took them off and, and that was that. So 
um, on this thing. So I'd say, you know, clearly they focused on the, the psychoacoustic effect of having massive drivers, uh, basically two little speakers hanging from each side of your ear. And I think that's clever and I think it works. It's a thousand dollar headphone. So you get a bit of magic there. Outside of that, I really think, uh, unless the company can prove to me otherwise, that as a pure driver that is tasked with producing 20 to 20,000 without doing weird things in between and build up modal resonances in different parts of the driver, uh, it doesn't seem like they've ironed out all the kinks there, uh, pun intended. And uh, I encourage them to go back and, and find the sources of these things and, and fix them or, or something, because I think this headphone Without those flaws, it could be an incredible headphone uh, because you have that spatial effect. And if you get rid of the distortion and everything else, it could be just beautiful. Um, a lot of people have come out after the review and said, oh, it sounds wonderful. I've compared it with a bunch of other headphones. I know all about headphones and it sounds great. I can't tell you that you're not enjoying it that way because again the spatial effects are quite good without eq is actually acceptable there's some headphones without eq i just can't listen to them at all this one's fine uh, but with eq it gets a lot better i've encouraged people to go plug in these these bands it's seven bands which i don't like i usually think a headphone should need two or three filters and that should be it to need this many to make it acceptable is not good. But if you have the Ananda, I highly encourage you to uh, go ahead and, and try this EQ and and post your, uh, you know, what you think in the comments. Uh, know that I'm not going to try to argue with you if you say you love it and it's the best thing you've heard. I, I've heard it and I know people who <laughs> like it. My job is to, you know, be critical enough to find differentiation between headphones. And I tell you, there's a difference between two headphones where one of them is follows the exact same tonality but doesn't have all this chewed up stuff. There's no question that all these chewed up uh, variations are impacting the music you're hearing. It, it just you can't say that well that stuff doesn't exist. Uh, it does exist. It's got ups and downs. It's got you know group delay. It's got distortion. So it's it's a flawed headphone. It just there's no way to get around. It. It's a flawed headphone. But it may just have, you know, other attributes that uh, you enjoy having, then I'm not going to argue with that. Um, so that's it. Uh, hope you got something out of this uh, review. If you're interested in this headphone, uh, I've got a bunch more. I'll do another headphone review right after this one, a different model. Okay, see you in another one. Bye-bye.